The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Uh, we're going to have a guest today, an author. Dan Schaefer is going to be our guest at 9.30. He's written a book, a uh, very popular book on Amazon about uh, bubbles and manias and depressions and stuff. So we'll be talking to him. Tomorrow, we are going to have a very old friend and special guest, Kevin Murphy. Kevin was the gentleman who studied with Bill Ehrman for Ehrmanometry. Uh, we watched his work develop over the years, and we lost him about four years ago to the big trading gods in the sky. And then on Friday, we've got the wolf man, the wolf trader. Shane Smullion will be our guest. So that's what we're looking for for the rest of this week. Next week, we will have uh, Stan Harley and uh, Bill Meridian on, uh, hopefully, because we're a little bit behind hearing those folks. So we'll certainly want to be doing that. The first chart we looked at here, of course, was the uh, Bund. And uh, the next one we want to look at, of course, is the uh, DAX. You can see here we're in a little bit of a seven- or eight-day correction here in the DAX. Hasn't really done very much at all. Uh, when we look at the DAX on a little bit uh, shorter time frame, going down to a half hour to an hour, hour chart, you'll be able to see that uh, we, we're, there's some pretty smaller swings that are in here for intraday that look uh, relatively interesting. Right now, the odds favor... Uh, the, the prepared mind, I guess. I would think it would be around around 12,370 is what I would be looking at uh, in this DAX on the 60-minute chart. And then if we take a look at the FTSE, we want to take a look at that. By the way, um, I was informed by my friend John Jameson that the DAX is a uh, difficult uh, um, uh, index, and the reason why it is based on earnings. In other words, they put the earnings back into the uh, index itself, so it's uh, it's price related. He'll he'll explain that to me later when I can understand it better. But uh, I wasn't even aware of that. I might just traded it. I haven't traded it many times, but uh, I certainly have, especially when I'm over I'm over in the UK. So, folks, let me let me talk just a tiny bit about these negative interest rates. I mean, just just. <laughs> the old cowboy's having a real rough time with this stuff because people ask me questions. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know how to, I don't even know how to fathom it. It's never happened in 7,000 years. This, look at this, folks. This is from Maudlin uh, Economics, John Maudlin, one of the more popular guys on the Internet. Um, the second worst debtor nation in the world is, is Italy. And look at this. They have negative interest rates, folks. Can you believe that? Negative interest rates on an Italian two-year bond. You're getting two and two point two on a on a on a two-year bond for the U.S. What, what's wrong with this picture? What am I missing? I mean, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to try to figure this out. I mean, something is not right. You know, I don't know. I don't, I'm just a little skeptical of it. If we get these bonds up uh, above those other highs, then by golly, you know, I'll go. I'll I, I will. Hey, look. You're going to have a hard time getting me to to believe that negative interest rates work. Just not going to happen. I I don't I don't think so. That's just my opinion. But you know who knows. Okay, let's move on to a couple things that we want to look at. We had a nice move. Silver and um, platinum are actually moving better than gold, which is what we want to see. I believe gold is imminent to a a breakout here. Uh, I thought we were going to do it yesterday. We got up to. Um, 1417 gave up the ghost, went all the way down to 1403, right at a 61% retracement last night. Third time we'd hit it over the last few days, telling us it's a very, very strong support in that area. So I would be looking to the long side uh, of the gold market is what I'm you know, focusing on today. Uh, we had a monster break in the crude oil, which we were expecting. If you'll remember, those of you that get the newsletter, the key thing in the newsletter this week was the fact that the crude oil market was ready to head to Miami Beach, heading south. And we had confirmation of that also 
by looking at the heating oil contact also. And both of those uh, were down more than 3% yesterday, having a little bit of a bounce back today. But uh, lower prices uh, are imminent, I believe, uh, in the crude oil. This is a major top up here at the 618 levels in both the crude, crude oil and the heating oil. So those are just a couple of them that look uh, look very, very interesting from the short side. I hope you made a couple bucks on that if you did. If not, there'll always be something else uh, out there. Since we were talking about the bonds, uh, one of the things that we were talking about yesterday was the importance of this 153 level uh, in the bonds. Uh, you'll notice that the, the drop that we had during late April uh, in the 30-year in the bond, we, we dropped uh, five handles. We've dropped the same amount this time, 157 down to 152 and change. So those are pretty much equal. The 3A2 comes in at 153. Any move below 153 uh, would suggest that we're, we're heading down, you know, much, much, uh, much, much deeper correction. So the, the head and shoulders pattern that we talked about way back in February, that beautiful ABCD there, that has completed up there at that 156 and change level. And if you remember from the old broken record here in Tucson, Arizona, I kept harping about this open interest thing. And uh, when we hear it again, folks, let's pay attention to it because it, it really does mean something. If you, ha if you don't have new players coming in, in these commodity markets, they're based on auction, you know, you are a bid offer, you know, and so if you don't have anybody on the other side of it, it makes it lopsided, and that's why you get these crazy moves. So for every buyer, there's got to be a seller, and sometimes they are different fellers. Anyway, let's move on and take a quick look at something that uh, someone brought to our attention that we talked about the other day, and that is the divergence that we're seeing in some of the indices as far as the new highs and new lows and advanced decline especially look at the NASDAQ, the bottom chart down there. You notice the advanced decline line is well below the August highs. Um, you'll notice that the NASDAQ composite is making new highs. The advanced decline line for the New York Stock Exchange is making new highs. But the New York composite is still below the old highs. So there's, there's some divergences here. But the biggest divergence that I look at, that really makes a lot of sense to me is the fact that I follow the money, you know, going back to Woodward and Bernstein, you know, follow the money and look at the banking index, folks. This is your homework for today. I'm not even going to post a chart because then you'll be too lazy and you won't do it yourself. But go in and look at the banking index, BKX, and you'll see that it is in a profound downtrend. I mean, it is made its top of, you know, almost a year ago. It did a year ago, January. So pay attention to that. It's uh, This is telling you that the banks are not nearly as uh, healthy as they're like to tell you with their earnings coming out today. Even though the earnings are good, some of them are selling off a little bit. But this banking index is not a bullish chart, folks. It really isn't. It's just, uh, it, it's just a little bit shaky. That's what it looks like uh, from the cheap seats here in uh, Tucson, Arizona, with the temperature of 105, and we've got the monsoon rains coming in. Folks, if we ever get knocked off the air here in the morning, it'll be because of the monsoons. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today.
If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I posted the chart of Bitcoin. It's in the news, of course, uh, mainly because of this new thing with Libra, which uh, I guess is the Facebook version of cryptocurrencies. And, of course, they're being – uh-oh, maybe I didn't put the chart in. I don't think I did. Let's double-check. Uh, let me get this up here, see if we can get this here. There we go. Uh, there we go. It looks, uh, looks looks real interesting here because uh, you'll notice that we had I, – I put in those dotted lines showing the little bounce. You'll notice that the little rally that we had up to that uh, 11,000 area over a period of about 10 days equal to the one that we had that where the other dotted line entered on point C. Uh, and now look where we're looking at. We've got ABCD coming down here to 8,900. We're trading at 90. 890, I think we're at 98 or something like that. We're down 12, 13 percent. This is really setting up for a really nice uh, uh, buy down in here, folks. It's really got a, uh, it's got a, this is about a perfect pattern as you can see in cryptocurrencies. I, you know, don't don't trade them, have, don't intend to, but it's a certainly a nice pattern, which tells me that the the public is certainly involved. Now what we need is more regulation from the government. That's what we really need. That's what we really need. That's always something that. Uh, we could always use is more government. I always like to quote from Thomas Jefferson, any government that has the ability to give you everything you want has the ability to take it all away. So we should remember that uh, in the future because that looks like the direction we're going in some of these things. Here's a pattern that we talked about uh, last week. Uh, someone asked me to review it, and I'm going to here. This is the one on the diamonds for the ETF for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. That is a one, two, three, four, five expanding triangle on the ETF with the Dow at 27,300 and change. Uh, that is a completed pattern. Does it fail? Of course it fails, but sometimes they work, and so we're waiting to see if this one is going to work. We don't know that as of yet. But uh, get someone's asked a question about the gold. Gold is looking very bullish, folks. I, I you know, I, I was trying to buy some today at uh, 1402. I got a little too creative and uh, missed it as usual. But uh, I, I do believe that gold has a really, really a good chance in here. And that's primarily because of this pattern that we're looking at on the uh, on this four hour chart. This is this is. Hold on. Wow, we're at 1410 already. This is good. Hold on. Well, it's not good for me, but let's get this up here. 
There we go. Move it over here. There we are. Oh, hold on just a second. There we go. There, you, you, you can see we, we got down to 1402. We took out those lows, 1403. I, the number I was trying to buy was 1402. Just missed it. Anyway, uh, now we're trading at 1410. If we can pop up above 1430, uh, that means we're going to take out 1440 without any trouble. And, folks, we have been here for a month. That's a month of high-level consolidation, not even making a 382 retracement, increasing open interest, silver starting to move higher, platinum starting to move higher. Folks, the green lights are coming on on these metals. So uh, you know, we got to figure out a way to get long, and that's what my job is here. The trouble is, every time I put in an order, I uh, I miss it by a buck or two, but we'll get it eventually. So we'll we'll see what happens here. But it, it's looking very bullish in the gold. It really is. I, uh, uh, you know, we'll see. Well, <laughs> well, anyway, we'll we'll watch it for sure. We will have uh, Bill Meridian on next week. And of course, he has his gold cycle that's been working pretty well. He'll give us an update uh, on that. So. We'll have him on uh, next week to see what we have uh, moving on. The um, the question that someone's asking uh, is about the crude oil. Is this a major correction in crude oil? Of course it is, folks. We've gone from 60, uh, 90 all the way down to uh, 57 and change. It stopped crude oil just for just for your uh, your own th uh, uh, thinking. You look at the crude oil low from last week. It stopped exactly to the tick at the 78% level. Not only that, but it did it twice because it had a big rally and then came right back and touched that low again. And so that's a really important bottom yesterday at 57 in that uh, crude oil. Very, very important. It's something that I think we uh, really ought to uh, take a look at. Uh, someone's asking, uh, where is Ruby? I don't know. I think. She's buying the sugar because it got down to that $12 a pound level. Uh, it's still trading at that level, so she was looking to buy it there. And, uh, well, 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 when she comes back, they all come back. Nobody leaves the den. This is a great place to hang out, folks. There's some really smart people here at TFNN at this den here. Boy, you've got some, uh, you've got some really smart guys that post some, and gals, of course. Really a nice one. I, you know, this is this is. Uh, if those of you that like the trend and stuff, take a look at this. Uh oh, someone says we're not on the on the. Can anybody hear? Uh, wow, what's wrong? Hmm, strange. What? Uh oh, no one can hear me. Huh? Hello, broadsword to Danny boy. Broadsword to Danny boy. The chicken is in the pot. The eagle has landed. Hello. Oh, okay, good. Back, back. Anyway, take a look at this natural gas, folks, down at this 230 level. It's, uh, uh-oh, I don't know what you mean by that, Al. Sorry about that, folks. Um, let's, uh, 230 in the natural gas is some very, very strong support down there. You're going to have to risk about 5 bucks, which is $500, but uh, that's got a real potential. You, you have a, a small uptrend forming now because you have higher bottoms. And higher tops over the last couple of weeks, so there is that, that trend could be changing. You got multiple ratios coming together at the same time in here at 230, 618, 786, Mother God and Country. That's what you're looking for. So um, all we're waiting now is for the 200-day moving average to cross the 400-day moving average, and we'll be ready to go. So pay close attention to it. By the way, folks, my grandson called me yesterday morning and he wanted to take his little 
squeeze his main squeeze down to see the Dodgers play over the weekend. They have a coming uh, uh, series, and he wanted to know if I could get tickets, and I said, well, I'll give it a shot, and so I gave it a shot, and as the, uh, the old uh, baseball gods were on my side, and we got him a couple of uh, really nice uh, 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 tickets for him to see the game, plus we got him a really cool place to stay, and uh, it'll, be, it'll be a lot of fun for him. Uh, he remembers the stories that his mother tells him of all the times we used to travel with the Dodgers. We didn't go with the team, of course, but we would go to the cities where they were and stayed at the same hotels. But we had a lot of fun back in those days. Stay tuned, folks. We're going to have Dan Schaefer on in just a few minutes. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we have Dan Schaefer on the line. Dan, are you there? Yes, I am. How are you? Well, I'm very good, and uh, he told me yesterday, folks, that he listens to our program here, so that's a good thing, Dan. Thank you very much. <laughs> on a regular basis. Hey, listen, I have a question for you. Before you you wrote a book on uh, economics of uh, hard times and stuff and, uh, yeah. uh, and and storms, what is your – do you have an explanation or a feeling on negative interest rates? That's the first question that one of our listeners is asking you today. Do you, do you have any feeling on that at all? 
Uh, yes, uh, I do, and I'll talk about that in a few moments. Is that okay? Yeah, um, you go ahead. Tell us what your hat. Since well, this is your I wanted, first time, I wanted to yeah, introduce ahead. myself to your audience because this is the first time I'm on your show, and I don't know your audience, so I just want to give them some credentials of who I am before I start going through some of the stuff I do. So uh, I used to be a floor trader on the New York Futures Exchange in 1982 when I uh, when I graduated college. And then I was a trader at Bear Stearns. Uh, I, I consulted Wall Street major accounting firms on trading. Um, I also was the manager of offshore hedge fund platform for a major bank. And we had it also in, um, on the Irish Stock Exchange platform. I um, also had my own hedge funds. I'm currently an independent trader. I'm an author of, that, of the book, Profiting in Economic Storms, which was published by John Wiley and Sons in 2010. And that talks about uh, depression, deflation, hyperinflation, and market bubbles. Uh, I used to publish the Schaefer Market Report. I don't do that anymore. I stopped that a couple of years ago. Uh, I consult with other traders and prop desks. I'm a guest commentator on a lot of national network television and radio shows. Uh, I, I'm a speaker for private and public events. And I'm also a registered investment advisor. I have a very small money management business now. And this is something that you talk about every day, Larry. And this is what I do in my speeches is that we want to get rid of the large losses and fear them. And a lot of people uh, reverse that logic. They hope that small losses and large losses come back. And then when they get profits, they fear those and they take them too early. So it's a psychological game. You're fully informed. I have your books. I, I, um, I'm I, fully aware. And, uh, and that gentleman that wrote that book that you talk about a lot, um, I forgot his name. Um, I had been in contact with him over the many years. Mark um, Douglas, probably. Yes, Mark Douglas. Thank you. Yeah, I'm 58 years old, so I've kind of been around a long time, too. And uh, I met him many, many years ago. So um, when I did have my newsletter, I was in Timer Digest, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Um, and I, this was the issue that they did a profile on me at the time. And I ranked on bonds. Now, I'm, I'm a big bond guy. Um, this was my ranking in 2016, and that was my last year of being tabulated. Um, I was number three, but the three and five years, I was number one as far as the market movements. And uh, 2015, I was the bond timer of the year. And let's see, this is me on uh, TV, if anybody's seen me before. Uh, this is the co cover of my book. And this is me with uh, Neil Cavuto. I'm on Neil Cavuto's show a lot on Fox Business between 12 and 2. Uh, this is me with Charles Payne. Charles and I are good friends. We've been I've been on his shows for 10 years. Uh, this is me on Wall Street Week when Anthony Scaramucci took over the rights to that and, and brought it back. And I was on with him one day. Uh, and then uh, back in the early 2000s, I had one of the best day trading S&P elect, um, uh, electronic programs. It was fully developed, uh, computerized through through uh, TradeStation. And Lynn Waldock, I was exclusive with them, and we traded about $20 million or so of that. And this was the flyer that they put in their book. So that's just kind of a little bit of an introduction of, um, of who I am. Now, if I can get this to work, let's see if I could switch around here. I can't get that to switch. What I wanted to do, well, ah, there we go. Let's see. Okay, can you see that this chart? I think they see, uh, they're they're posting it through Skype, so we should be just fine. Yes. If you okay. have any technical difficulties, please let me know because that's my specialty. I, I am really good at this stuff. <laughs> I I can I can handle anything you you can throw my way. So let me know if you run into a problem. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead and continue, Dan. Okay, Larry. So these this is the bond. I wanted to talk about some of the things that you talk about. And this is the bond chart. This is the 30-year Treasury bond futures contract. And I'm very bullish on this contract, and I've been bullish for a long time. And I know that textbook-wise, it talks about that when open interest is low, and if you see my pointer down here, that there's not a lot of interest. But also when open interest goes low in certain environments, it means that they're not hedging. So if they're not hedging, you have less open interest, which gives an opportunity for prices to rise even further. So at the moment, I know that you're bearish on the bonds. I'm bullish on the bonds. And if I take that to a weekly chart, uh, I look at this pattern, and I look that we could possibly test this level. I know it sounds crazy, but the way the economics are panning out from my research of the at least the last 200 and plus years of the United States cycles and then global cycles going back 2,000 years, 
there is a reason why the interest rates are going negative, and I think it's being generated by central bank intervention, and I think that they're very worried about something big that's coming. So I look at that point of view, and I say, okay, I'm, I'm going to kind of stay bullish in that trend. This is the, uh, if it clicks in, this is the 10-year Treasury on a weekly chart, and you can clearly see that the open interest has gone down uh, a little bit but that the commercials, the smart money, is still net long. And I follow the commercials. This I learned from uh, one of your friends, Larry Williams, who I, who I you know, I interacted with for the last 30 years and understood some of what he does. And so that that's my position on, on the interest rates. When I look at the spreads, I look at the 10-year versus the two-year spread, and I see that we're at levels that are quite low, which if you look back in 2000 and you look back in 2006, these were precursors of a major decline in equity markets and assets. And this prolonged decline here is telling me that we're, in, we're on the cusp of what I think, that's just my opinion, I think we're on the cusp of a potential depression. And I say that lightly because everybody's excited about the GDP at 1.2 or 1.4 or 1.8. Those are horrible numbers. And if we can't get the GDP up with interest rates as low as they are today, then we've got something bigger coming on the horizon. And I think that's what the Federal Reserve is worried about. Uh, this is the spread between the 30-year and the 10-year Treasury yield. And you clearly see that it's it's coming back to test this line. And then I project that it, that spread could narrow again. And then the 30 and the 2-year are also acting the same way. So that gives me some concern as to the future of, of interest rates. And then I also do a, a TLT spread to the S&P which looks like that might be ready to take off, which means TLT will get stronger than the S&P. So that's that's my take on the bond model for the moment. Well, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But that that's how I, I look at that. Uh, Larry, can I switch over to gold? We have time for that right yes, now? Yes, oh, we certainly have time. We're going to we have a commercial coming up here, but this is quite interesting. You've already had... Uh, uh, more interest than I've had in a week in the room, so this is good. What I'd like okay. to do is start start with the gold here, and then okay. uh, when the, when you hear the music, if you don't hear it, I'll let you know they have to pay the bills, and then you'll have you on for another 10-minute uh, segment. This is quite interesting for everyone. So, uh, Great. Great. yeah, that okay. sounds really good. Uh, we're going to have you on again. At, uh, I've already sure. decided that. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's good. So, so let me tell you about gold, because I know you're bullish on gold, and Everybody's bullish on gold. Uh oh, oh, here comes the commercial, we'll buddy. The Stay with us. Okay. And we'll be right back. Dan Schaefer will be with us right away. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South 
African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, folks, we're back. We're talking with Dan Schaefer about gold. You want to continue, Dan? Yes, yes. So this is my weekly gold chart. And I look at the commercials and I do look at the open interest like you do. And I interpret this as a very bearish signal. Now, it doesn't mean that gold couldn't go higher. You and I both know we could be both wrong, and, and that, that always happens. But when I look at the technicals here, and I see where the commercials are going, and I look at the historically what the commercials do, I say to myself, why is gold rallying if I think we're going to go into a depression and, or, or a serious recession? So historically, gold has taken this run up. This is on a monthly chart. It's come down. It's traded around, and it's trying to peak out here. But I think the next leg down is on gold is to test this line, the 200-month move, uh, 200 moving average. And I believe, you know, technically that based on the measurements that I get with the commitment of traders and the open interest, that can even overshoot and possibly hit 800. After that, I would be a buyer for these levels above 2,000. But I don't think that it's been cleaned out yet. And that's my technical analysis based on the uh, looking at the charts and looking how the commercials are positioned, but then also looking at economic conditions. That's that's the concern that I that I have for gold. Um, I wanted to also talk about um, the uh, which I don't have a chart for the cryptocurrencies. I am not a believer in cryptocurrencies. I think that this is a farce. I think it's dangerous. I think that Facebook coming out with a currency called Libra is is a joke against the United States and it's actually dangerous to the um, to the to the foundation of our country of somebody trying to compete with the United States currency and uh, it goes back to my concept with the euro and the euro to me was also a, a very poor decision by in Europe because what they were trying to do was compete against the United States by combining 17 countries to have one currency creating like a United States or a United Union in, in Europe having a, a currency compete with the United States for trade, and that's backfired. And the reason that, that I believe that's backfired is because every country needs its own currency to balance trades. That's exports and imports. If And that's what I believe is causing major financial problems in Europe, is having one currency. So my belief is there should be one currency for every country. These companies that are coming out with their own currency are just underscoring the fabric of the United States. and. And I just wanted to give you my two cents on that, Larry. I don't know how you feel about it, but to me, that no, was that, an important thing. That's four levels over my pay grade, cowboy, but it certainly is interesting. I, I can understand that with that many, you know, I, you can't get two people to agree on anything, let alone a whole bunch of countries. I've always felt that. And, you know, right. we've seen the euro go from 85 to 165, <clears throat> back to 112. So it can go anywhere, but it certainly looks very long term, that's for sure. Right. And that also ties in with the price of gold because gold is priced mostly in U.S. dollars, and so is crude oil. So if, if the euro, which my target on the euro, is below 90 cents, I'm targeting somewhere around this level, coming all the way down here, 
that that's where the euro is going to end up. And then I believe they're going to get rid of it. I think every country is going to go back to their old Deutschmark, the lira, all this stuff's going to come back again. And, and I think they're going to finally realize that that experiment was just not worth it. And so tying in if the euro does come down, because that's mostly part of the dollar index, as we know, and crude oil, which I believe with the slowdown coming that, well, let me take some of this stuff off of here, uh, with the slowdown coming, that I think that crude oil could potentially drop down to uh, a lot lower in the levels. Hang on, let me just delete that and delete this. I'm sorry, I didn't realize I had that set up. So here's, here's my weekly um, crude oil chart. And this crude oil, based on what everybody's saying, how great everything is, should normally should should be up here by now, and it never made it. So with the trend that I'm seeing in crude oil and where the commercials are positioning and where the open interest is, I'm beginning to see that I believe that the premium in crude oil right now is only because of uh, political unrest, which I don't think is going to become an issue. And that at that point, as manufacturing and the use and the need for less crude oil will cause this to target my uh, my target is back to twenty five dollars which was that original low down here in uh, 2016 and the reason I say that is because there's a lot of conversion going on to natural gas and I'm very bullish natural gas I know you talked about it uh, on your you've been talking about it on your show uh, I, I, I caught this ride up here this was a beautiful move I was loading the boat all through here sold it out up here and now I've been slowly buying it back since this level. So I'm a little underwater on that now, but it doesn't bother me because look where the commercials are. You see that, Larry? And right over here, the commercials. Now over here was a long, prolonged trend down for a while. But this, the way this is trading and the way the open interest is showing me that the commercials are loading up for a big run higher. So that's where I think the future is, is in natural gas and liquefied natural gas. And crude oil is probably going to be sitting in the dust. That's, that's my opinion. My next t talk, uh, uh, my next topic is about where's the money going to go? Well, here we are in a cycle of a stock market that's just been booming for no reason except that central banks are pumping money into the system to get the stocks up. We clearly know that. But I believe that the end of, end of this kind of cycle that we're in is where commodities, the raw materials, start to take off. And I'm not talking gold and, and silver and oil. I'm talking more like sugar. Okay, sugar down at these levels. The commercials are just basically sitting there. They're not doing anything. They're not even hedging. So I'm, I'm bullish on sugar. I'm very bullish on coffee, as, you you, as you've talked about. Coffee, to me, even though the commercials have gone slightly negative, the open interest is very low, and the cost of, of, of uh, growing coffee is right around these levels. So that can't stay down there for very long. I'm also bullish on cotton. I think cotton is going to be a, a big winner for the next year or two. We see here the commercials are building a long position, but open interest is low, which means they're not hedging. See, here they were hedging, up here, hedging net short. That was a top. I don't see that. I see more of this kind of a pattern and this kind of a pattern or this kind of a pattern up here where the commercials are net long with very low open interest. And that's the kind of trends that uh, I think we'll see. So I kind of told you everything that I wanted to get out there at the moment. Uh, is there anything you want me to talk more about? No, this is really good. What I, what I plan to do is I'll call you later on the next week, and uh, we'll plan on having you on, and maybe we'll talk more about natural gas and a few of the other things that you're talking about. I, I certainly like your ideas of you know what you think might be happening because I what I re what little I do read doesn't make any sense to me and that's why I'm a technician you know I really stay away from the news and and all the other stuff and just look at the bar charts and that's you know kept me out of the the right the, and the that's what house. I yeah. you know Larry I I, I want to interject I look at time and price and I work now very closely with uh, your friend Norm Winsky because I'm actually adding, um, I, I was part of the Delta Society with Wells Wilder with the moon cycles, and I've been doing that for years, but then when I met with Norm and learned about what the astro trading about, and I, I bought your books, I said, okay, there's more to my, my analysis now that I can tie that in, and it's working very interestingly well. So I thank you for, for, for showing that, but the point is that um, there's a lot of opportunity here in things that are, are going to move, and I'm a technician like you are. I don't read the newspapers. I have the TV on with no sound. I only see what the price action is telling me. That's how I was trained. Uh, and also my background is I'm a CPA. I have a master's in accounting. 
I also count cards at blackjack, so I look for those kind of cycles. And I'm a numbers guy, and numbers, price, and time is what tells me what the game is, and that's how I play the game. Great. Listen, we're going to have you on again, Dan Schaefer, so I'll, I'll be in touch with you, and we'll, uh, we'll plan on maybe in a couple of weeks, uh, maybe towards the end of the month here, we'll have you on again, and we'll plan something for folks to be interested in. They already have an interest, so we'll follow through. Thanks a lot, Dan. Okay, thank you. You bet. We'll be right back, folks. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. I've posted the chart of silver, and you can see silver has taken the lead here the last few days. Uh, thanks to Mr. Z and uh, Dude Ed in the room, you know, they've been on top of this, so... Uh, certainly looks like it's uh, breaking out uh, to the upside. Gold will probably be falling. We're trading around 14, 14 in the gold, and uh, that's going to be taking out those highs of yesterday pretty soon. And we could easily have a move above the uh, 14, 25 level if it really gets moving. That's the whole key here. We'll see if it's going to continue that. Uh, regarding the hogs, folks, the hogs still look good. Uh, we're going to have Rich Anderson on next week, of course, to give us a little review of what's going on. The grains have sold off a little bit from uh, last week's high, but only 20 cents or so in corn, 20 cents or so in beans, 20 cents or so in wheat. So these are just normal corrections. We're over this lunar eclipse and full moon. That might have been the bottom coming in here yesterday. 
Uh, only time will tell, but they're a little bit stronger this morning, so we'll we'll have to do uh, follow those as we go through here. Uh, pay attention to the U.S. dollar, folks. It's trying to hang on here to break out to the upside. We need that euro to get below 111.50. Uh, then I think that dollar index will really start moving you know, to the upside. And whether that will have any influence on the gold or not, I really don't know. I'm just looking at one chart or another. That's basically what I'm trying to do here. The British pound, folks, we broke below that 124.40 level. Uh, we're trading at 124.20. Uh, A lot of resistance now back at those old lows at 124.50. Uh, I would be looking to go short that British pound up at that 124.50 because the longer-term weekly charts are telling you that there's a possibility of a 118 to 116 in that British pound. And given what's going on in the political environment over there, much like ours, uh, anything could happen. So uh, you don't want to try to be finding a bottom down in here. We had a nice run on it. Uh, you know, it was able to make a little money, and then it gave up the ghost. So uh, I think you have to just stand aside on that British pound or try to get short because you know, I, and if it gets it back above 125.20 again, I'll be totally wrong. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless.